Hey guys, um, been a little while since I've made a haul video, um, but I was very fortunate I was able to pick a few things up at um, some local comic shops. Uh, anyway, not going to ramble on too much, let's just go ahead and look at the comics. Got uh, Patel, number 12. Um, this one was an upgrade for me. Uh, I've been trying to get all of this series. It's just a really interesting story. I've talked about it on some of my previous videos. It's about this lady who's, uh, by all, you know, by all accounts, is immortal. Uh, the story kind of unfolds slowly to give her origin, which I haven't actually read any of the issues yet that give any definitive origin. It kind of hints at things here and there. But she was involved with a demonic cult, from what I can understand. Like I said, this story is, it unfolds very slowly and only drops hints here and there, and you kind of have to piece them together. Um, the stories take place in the uh, night in the 1800s, the 1920s, 1930s, 1950s. Uh, there's one set during World War II that I've read. Um, pretty much every decade up to the 1980s from what I've read, ones that I've read. Anyway, it's a really interesting story. Um, if you can pick them up, which you should be able to pick them up pretty cheap, because I found every, every issue I found has been in either a dollar bin, 50 cent bin, or quarter bin. I think there are 24 issues total in this uh, in this series. I know that they did trade paperbacks. There's three trade paperbacks that uh, tell the entire story from the one to the last issue. So if you can find them cheap, uh, you know, it's a good read, good cheap read. Also got number 20. Number 21. number 22 and number 23 Slide over a little bit also picked up a few issues of Cerebus picked up number 88 number 110 and number 111 this is a uh, departure from your standard hero, superhero fare that a lot of comic books have in them. Uh, this one is, well, as I've said before in one of my other videos, this is kind of a treatise on the human condition, um, seen through the life of an aardvark. <laughs> anyway, it, it addresses some really deep concepts, if you pay attention. Um, you can read it on the surface for what it is, and it's just a, you know, it's just a story. But when you read it and you think about the topics that it addresses and some of the things it says and does, you very quickly figure out that there are a lot of layers to this story and that it goes a lot farther than what it does than what you think on the surface. Anyway, it's a great story. It's 300 issues. The first 25, 26 issues are like really, really hard to find, and if you do find them, they're usually really expensive because they were put out uh, independently uh, back in the 70s. But uh, if you can find them, I would recommend picking them up. But if you do, if you do start getting these, I would get story arcs and read those because if you try to read individual issues it's not going to make a whole lot of sense. Cerebus is kind of like Patel. You have to follow it as it grows because everything in it builds on something that was done before. But anyway, they're good reads, really good reads. Found this from ICG, the official Crisis on Infinite Earths Index. I haven't looked through this one yet. Um, didn't pay six bucks for it. By the way, I think every one of these was either 75 cent or a dollar. So these came out of the cheap boxes, but uh, kind of looking forward to looking through this, just kind of see what uh, see what it does, see what it says. 
We got Avengers number 401 and number 402. I actually bought when I bought this, uh, I was buying it because 401, for, excuse me, 402 was in the bag. But when I got it home, 401 was actually behind 402. So I ended up getting a getting a bonus book. This is pretty cool. Got uh, Time Masters Vanishing Point number one. I wasn't familiar with this mini series, um, but it had a Batman figure on the front, and I'm a big Batman fan, so. Thought I'd pick it up just just for that. Got Superman, the Earth Stealers. I have heard I had heard about this this uh, graphic novel. Uh, it's been a while, but, but I had heard about it and heard that it was kind of interesting. I mean, it's got John Byrne, Kurt Swan, and Jerry Ordway art in it, so I figured, hey, you know, for a buck, I certainly can't go wrong with that. Now, Nick Fury vs. S.H.I.E.L.D., book one of six. I've got a couple of other issues of this. Um, pretty good story. It's uh, on the order of there are some bad guys who infiltrate S.H.I.E.L.D. and they kind of push Nick Fury out and make it look like he's a, he's a bad guy. And these six trade paperbacks, or excuse me, not trade paperbacks, graphic novels are... Him trying to redeem himself and get back into the good graces of S.H.I.E.L.D. and ferret out the bad guys. Anyway, it's a pretty good spy story. Uh, get these out of the way. Now, what if, number six, what if the Fantastic Four had different superpowers? I've been uh, piecing this uh, series together over the last several years. Um, I've got a good many of them and been able to get most of them out of dollar boxes, you know, to add to the ones I already had. Just a good story, you know, good stuff, all kind of interesting things, just stories you wouldn't see in, in mainline continuity. That's Superman number 411. This is one I've wanted for a while. Um, the gentleman on the cover, this the bald-headed guy sitting at the desk, is Julie Schwartz, who was the who was an editor at DC from like 1944 to the mid 80s. I've had the pleasure of meeting uh, Mr. Schwartz a couple times before he passed away. I got a copy of his biography and uh, got him to sign it for me. Anyway, this was the send-off issue for him because he was the editor for Superman from the early 70s, I think like 1970, 71 to 1985. Anyway, I've just wanted this one because I've read about this issue and it sounds pretty cool. Now, Sergeant Rock Special number five. I mean, it's, hey, it's Joe Kubert, art, Robert Kaniger's story, Bob Haney art. I mean, it's got uh, Ross, Ross, um, Andrew, Mike Esposito, and Russ Heath art in it. Can't go wrong with that for a dollar. Plus, I like those old war comics. Got this one because the one that I had, this is uh, the New Teen Titans Baxter series, number 13. Got this one because the one that uh, I have is water damaged on the bottom, and it's kind of, you know, when they get water damaged, they get wavy on the bottom. Anyway, this one is a much better looking copy, so picked it up to upgrade. A comics issue special edition, Lone Wolf special. I've always liked Lone Wolf and Cub. Great series um, that was adapted by, um, I believe it was First Comics in the mid 80s. Um, got a good many issues. I've got about half of them. But uh, anyway, they, they interview the uh, two co-creators in this and uh, I just thought this would be interesting to read. Plus it's got an interview with Frank Miller who was real heavily involved with that series. Pick this one up because it was a dollar and it was a hundred page and it's Batman. Um, the guy the uh, comic shop told me this was one of the ones that DC produced for Walmart that apparently didn't go over very well. So anyway, so I picked that one up. Picked it up. 
Now, 100 Greatest Marvels of All Time. This is number 22 to 25. Number 18 to number 21. And number four, 17 to number 14. These are reprints of classic Marvel stories. I know that one of these has uh, a reprint of Hulk 181 in it. There's a reprint of Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man number 33, uh, with the classic cover with Spider-Man uh, under this huge machine. There's uh, some Avengers stories in this. Just, you know, good stuff. Uh, and I'm pretty sure there is a reprint of Iron Man number 55 in one of these books. So you get to see the first uh, appearance of Thanos. Pick this up. Yeah, I know. It's Lassie from Dale. This is from the early 50s. I think this one is number 6, something like that. Anyway, I just picked these up because these were early 50s. The artwork in them is uh, pretty good. The stories are pretty much what you would expect from a Dale comic, uh, that, uh, especially where the main character is Lassie. Uh, benign, you know, the stories are kind of benign and harmless, but, you know, it's just, uh, it's still, it's, it's good stuff for, for what it is. And I also picked up number, I think this is number 15, from like 1954, something like that. Anyway, not in the best of shape, but, you know, for a dollar, mid-50s comic, why not? All right. Got, uh... Barrier, free comic book day edition. Um, I had picked up an, a, uh, an issue of this uh, series in a previous haul and uh, found it to be pretty intriguing, but to be honest, the issue I picked up was like number five or number six, and they were pretty far along in the story, so I really couldn't figure out exactly what was going on. I mean, I picked up some hints about what was going on, but... Uh, I figured this one, you know, I could pick it up and kind of fill myself in. Plus, this one was free. Um, they had some books on the on the uh, on a table that were free. This one wasn't free, but this is uh, Laugh number seventy nine from Archie Comics from February nineteen fifty seven. They had a really good price on this one. Um, once you get back before nineteen sixty with any Archie comic, they get like really really expensive I mean this one's got some dings on it and everything but it's it's early 1957 and it's in you know covers in relatively decent shape and uh, spines in fairly decent shape so thought I'd pick it up just to have a 1950s Archie comic got uh, Mouse Guard free comic book day edition this was the hardcover um, I think this came out in 2008 or 2009. I remember going to uh, my local comic shop on Free Comic Book Day specifically to get this book, and they were already gone by the time I got up there. So I was disappointed in that, but it just shows the value of patience. Um, I was able to get it, and I actually got it for free because, again, this is one of the free books that the guy had on the table. Now, last two. I'm going to have to move back for this. Pick these up. And got a really good price on them. Silver Age DC Comics. This is a thick book from Tashin. This is uh, just a really, really cool book. I mean, you've got all this artwork covers and you know, classic reprints of covers and action pages and all kind of different things in it just a really cool book that wasn't all also got the golden age of DC comics from Tashin this one's just like the other one you know you've got all this classic artwork from the 40s just really 
really really cool stuff especially if you're into comics from that time period um i got both of these i think for 22 dollars total i think i paid 11 a piece for them i looked them up online you can actually get them from tashin the the company that printed them they were originally like 70 bucks but you can get them i know you can get the golden age one for like 25 or 30 so now that's not too bad i just ran up on a deal and couldn't pass it up anyway that is my haul um hope you saw something that you liked or sparked an interest or anyway hopefully i'll be making another one here for too long um i've got uh got some plans we'll, we'll we'll see if i'm able to make them come to pass but anyway thanks for sticking with me uh like comment subscribe